where's best for me to send? Is here. Okay. Okay. Because as the water goes out of the fountain, which means that height one will increase over time. 
Then we substituting those values for height 1 and height 2 back into our original equation, we find that the water jet height will vary with time, described by the initial height difference between height 2 and height 1, minus 2 times the flow rate for the pipes divided by the cross-sectional area of the containers. Okay, now let's look at some of the frictional effects that will work to slow down and reduce the height of the fountain. So we know that water is a polar substance and has strong cohesive and adhesive forces and because of this, water is viscous. Viscosity is essentially a measure of the resistance of a fluid to deform under shear stress or, in a sense, the internal friction of the particles. Um, it's measured in pascal seconds and kinematic viscosity is the ratio between viscosity and the density of a fluid. Further, Reynolds number is a dimensionless quality used to predict flow patterns and is described here. We then look at it when for Reynolds numbers below 2000, it's laminar, there will be the least resistance. Between 2000 and 4000, it's unsteady or transitional, where there will be more resistance to flow. And finally, turbulent flow in the tubing will re result in the most reduction of the fluid velocity in the tubing. Finally, the no slip condition essentially assumes that there's zero fluid velocity on the sides with the maximum fluid, fluid velocity occurring along the centre of the tubing which gives rise to the hagen poisset equations. Essentially, the hagen poisset equation describes the fluid velocity in a corrective sense that takes into account some of these frictional forces. So if we equate that to our flow rate we were describing earlier, expanded and simplified, we find a new equation for our fluid velocity. We then label W the fluid velocity in this case, the fluid velocity. So if we now look at putting that back into another equation of motion, with that um, fluid velocity, we now um, equate that to um, um, having voice A and rearrange to find a corrected um, value for the water jet height, which essentially has in terms of the pressure differential, the radius of the tubing, the length of the tubing, and then the, um, um, the viscosity of that tubing. So now we, it gives us a fairly good prediction of what should happen in our experiments. We have um, the following um, proportionalities from Hagen Poisset describing that, which we'll now explore in the experiments. So, moving on to experimental procedure. Essentially, the Herons fountain was constructed. It took many different attempts to get one that was both airtight and functioning, and we investigated the variables I discussed earlier the height difference, the tube radius, and the length of the tube. All trials were video, and we conducted five trials for a minimum of five dark points. These are our experimental setups consisting of uh, sealable um, Tupperware containers sealed with a significant amount of blue tack and we use uh, rubber tubings of different diameters for that and we um, set it up. We also use blue fruit dye so that our program, which we'll talk about next, could function. So to analyse all that raw data, we wrote a program using Java, which essentially compared frames with the differences from the previous frame, looking at the most the height of that blue coloured liquid and essentially that produced raw data in the form of this graph for every single frame, the maximum height of that. We then chopped off the ends where the fountain was starting and the bottom ending. And then from that we found the maximum height and the mean height throughout that and looked at those from our experiments. Okay, so now if we look at some of the results. First we'll look at height difference. So, in height difference, to change the height difference, the difference between H2 and H1, we only we left everything else constant and just changed the height of container C. So essentially, we then put this in and looked at it. So we found that our mean water jet height compared to our height of container C produced a quite a linear relationship. Um, the predicted heights were in the realm of 1.5 metres to half a metre. Whereas our actual dark, raw, dark, raw data showed heights between about one centimetre and four centimetres. As I explained earlier, this is a result of all the friction that is not taken into account in this simplified equation. We then looked at the frictional coefficient, so essentially the predicted versus the actual, and we found that our frictional coefficient was relatively consistent throughout the experiments, which suggests that this relationship does hold true. There was one at small anomaly, which um, was likely a result of the containers failing to seal or failing to um, reach pressure because that would um, stop the fountain from continuing to grow. Okay, moving on to tube radius, we have the maximum tube maximum water jet height reached by the tube and then the average here. So these um, raw data points follow a vaguely um, parabolic trend shown there. So if we did a, we did a little bit more looking. So the data removing an anomaly, 
we find that it's a um, cubic relationship. However, correctly, it should be a, a function of the fourth power relationship, but simply by um, finding the cross-sectional area from the radius shown here, we then find the correct proportionality. So our, um, the radius of the fourth power is analogous to the cross-sectional area to the square. So that produced our parabolic train suggested by the hagen poisson equation, which was relatively strongly um, supported by our experimental data. So we had an average water jet height maximally uh, between 5, um, 50 and 60 um, um, square um, millimetres in a cross-sectional area with a small anomaly there. And this data seems um, reasonable compared to our results with the um, 8 millimetre of radius tube or uh, about 52 um, square, um, millimetre square um, cross-sectional area being around the peak and it produced significantly greater um, water jet fountains. Okay, now looking at the length of the tube C. This again found the raw data for it looked slightly, um, it looked fairly consistent through here. We put in the straight line for to compare the values to follow your eye down there, but we know from Hagen plus A it should be an inverse square relationship. So putting that on in an inverse square model line, it seems quite consistent. We removed that anomaly so that the data um, matched that relationship quite well, and that really uh, gives us an R squared of 0 0.99, which then um, supports the, um, um, the theoretical equation. Okay, so now moving on to some of the additional results. Um, as discussed in the theory, we expected that the um, water jet height would decrease over time in a fairly linear fashion. Um, this is the raw data from one of the experiments with the water jet at each frame and we see quite a linear um, drop over time with approximately a gradient of 0 0.003 which was about the same in all of our trials. So in conclusion, we looked at Harris pattern problem, we explained how it works and we investigated relevant parameters of that fountain. We explored some mathematical models including the Lillies and the Hagen Poisset's equation and finally we discovered that um, the relationship between height difference was um, fairly linear as described here and the relationship between true cross-sectional area and height was a um, quadratic relationship and the relationship between length of tube and water jet height was inverse squared as suggested by Hagen Poisset. Thank you very much. Um, here's our result. Okay, so next stage we have two minutes for clarification questions. So um, if we report, I just have a couple of questions for you. First, what is the definition of the height? So did you only take the maximum height? Uh, so, um, as I explained um, in, um, in the data analysis, um, we took the, all the heights and we looked at the mean height and the maximum height so reached by the fans. Okay, thank you. So we looked at both. So for the Reynolds number, uh, is, did you actually make an estimation of what it is? Uh, no, we didn't make an estimation of what Reynolds number is in that because that's not using the Hagen point say. That was just to um, describe how flow is described and how it reduces um, the flow rate. So for the Hagen point say, are you assuming that it's laminar flow? Um, we were assuming it was laminar flow okay. for in those experiments. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And did you consider the effect of the water perhaps falling back on itself and that change on the height? Yes, so we looked at the water falling back on itself. In most of our experiments, um, it was um, slightly, it wouldn't fall back on itself, it fell slightly off it, so it didn't really make much of an effect. So, regarding your initial release, correct me if I'm wrong, but you poured it directly into the beaker. Uh, correct, So, yes. how did you control the amount of food that you're pouring into? Um, because as you're pouring, the height may be changing. Sorry. Okay, yeah, so we use um, two conical flasks that were always filled to 500 milliliters of water yeah. and we pour them in. We use two to allow us to pour it faster. So, so how do you make sure that the flow rate, uh, the speed at which you're pouring in the water is constant? Um, so the f f speed at which we're pouring in that water wasn't particularly relevant because as you saw then, there's a small gap in time between the water being poured in and then the fountain really starting. Okay. So we didn't think that was an issue. Okay, that makes sense. Can you go to slide 22? So you mentioned here that your thin values have a really large deviation and C is about a factor of 10. Yeah. So can your correction factor actually correct for this? Um, yes, yeah, so our correction factor, those coefficients, um, um, can essentially the average one we put in front of that and will give us essentially an um, approximate prediction of the water jet height. So is this with the correction factor or without? No, so this is the raw data, this is the actual, this is the prediction oh, of values. Okay, okay. So that's the, essentially Trans the difference. Okay. Okay. Okay, you have, uh, you only have three minutes to prepare your, sorry, no, 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 three minutes to prepare.
Excuse me, can that be, is this a VGA connector, isn't it? Can this be put onto the VGA? So good afternoon, Jerry. I'm Dave Bonner from Team Taiwan from Four Harris County. So before we actually begin to look at the report, let's first remind ourselves what exactly the problem statement asks us to do. So just to read, as a reminder, the problem statement asks us to construct our hands fountain as pictured on the right here and explain how it works, especially investigating how the parameters affect the height of the water jet. And so for this, we think that first and foremost, we need to define what exactly the height of the water jet is. And so we did that in the clarifying questions where the team, uh, the reporter said that that was the maximum and the average height. So the report would like to propose this structure in order to solve this problem. First, we need to know what exactly is the fountain's mechanism. In other words, what are the important forces involved here? And what are some possible causes of energy losses? Uh, for, the, uh, for the reporter, they used the hydrogen plus L uh, uh, method. However, uh, the, reporter had, the opponent has uh, some better methods that I think could consider the boundaries between uh, both the turbulent and the laminar flow. Then we look at how the fountain's characteristics affect the water jet. And so for this, this includes uh, primarily the differences between the heights and also the diameters of the tubes and even some characteristics regarding the water itself. Uh, and especially we'd like to have the reporter further explain uh, some of the deviations in the theory and their experimental results. Then finally, we we'll look at how the height of the water jet changes with time, seeing as the reporter did not do a very uh, clear job of explaining the time dependency of the height of the water jet, uh, especially the very obvious oscillations. So this is some strong and weak points. The uh, reporter did a good job of defining their symbols and their system. And overall, they had a very detailed explanation of the entire mechanism, going from reservoir A all the way through to reservoir C. However, in terms of some weak points, we think that they could have better controlled their release mechanism, which, as they said earlier on, although they controlled the amount of volume uh, that was added into it, they did not control the flow rate in which it was added. And this obviously affects the height A, which would then affect the pressure at the nozzle. Then they do not consider energy loss thoroughly enough, seeing as uh, you know the well-known major loss and minor losses, which are caused by the tube shape and tube diameter, uh, were not actually considered in their energy calculations. Uh, the deviations in the graph were not very well explained, uh, especially the oscillations, which were completely uh, ignored by the reporter. And finally, even though they mentioned the Reynolds number, they did not actually calculate it. And because of that, they can't make sure that their assumption that the flow is laminar is in fact correct. And so uh, the Point uh, has some suggestions regarding that. So, to address some of the weak points, we think that uh, the discussion will go roughly like this. First, we'll talk about the conservation of energy. So, they did a good job discussing the transition between the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy of the water itself. Uh, however, there are some other sources of energy loss, uh, for example, the shape of the tubes that they're using. Uh, then, regarding the height of the jet, uh, we've clarified the definition already. However, we would like to uh, see if they can really actually calculate the maximum height using the velocity alone, seeing as we know the water falls back on itself, which will affect the apparent height. Uh, then regarding the effect of parameters, we'd like to clarify what exactly are the deviations in their experiments. Uh, for example, in the experiment regarding the different heights, the two uh, diameters. And finally, we want to look at the time dependence and whether or not we can find an explanation for the time dependence of the height. Uh, for example, uh, as you can see in the graph, there was a very clear uh, downwards decrease in trend. And so we want to see if the fitted value for that linear fit uh, actually matches with any kind of physical property that can be measured on their experiment. Uh, then we'd like to know whether or not their uh, theory can predict the oscillations. And finally, because uh, the experiment is obviously dynamic, the Reynolds number will be changing. And so we'd like to further discuss how they can adjust their uh, calculations for the energy loss to include this uh, in their assumptions as well. So that being said, I'd like to go into the discussion with the reporter. Okay. So starting with the uh, contribution of energy. So you yeah. stated earlier that uh, the correction factor that you use is the uh, Hagen plus L and you right. assume that it was on your flow, correct? Yeah. So How uh, did you actually fit this with your uh, results from earlier? 
Okay, so we never um, put in all of those factors into one equation because we wouldn't be able to do that to keep anything constant. We, we looked at individual parts, we never actually add them all together in one equation because that would have been um, very um, difficult to keep things constant. So what, what are you exactly saying would change as you would if you were to add this term into your theory? No, so, um, I add this term into our theory. So yeah, so why do you actually substitute this in? See, as you mentioned that you can use this correction, but you didn't actually use it in your uh, comparison between the theory and your experiments. Yeah, so as I was saying, in the experiments, to do that, we would have to measure um, um, all those different things and put them together, but that would have been not keeping stuff constant. Okay, so here what you have is the pressure, this is gravity, right? Yeah. And these, these should be constants, correct? Yes. So in that case, what exactly is the variable that you can't fit into your theory? No, so what we did was we looked at each part. So we did one, we looked at the rays of the true diameter. That was the one that had these new results. So if I go to that, that's like... Um, so like here, we put... Um, we put um, here, we put that, this is comparing that part of the relevant one that we changed from hanging the set and left the rest of it constant. So we only looked at that relationship, we didn't calculate the constant because it went So there's that. one other uh, issue. Uh, if you could go to your instrument to set up again. Yeah. I'd just like to see uh, the shape of the tubes. Did you make sure that the tubes were always straight? Or yeah, so. Sometimes have bends in them. So they had to have bends in them for them to actually. Um, right travel between the containers. We try to make the bends as gradual as possible, but you are correct in saying that there would have been other frictional forces from the water flowing through those bends, which were another contributing factor to the diff major difference between the theoretical values for the height and the experimental values. And the flow through those two cur curves in the tube were the sort of things that do slow down the fluid, fluid velocity. But in our setup, okay. you have to have the tubes turning to actually work. Okay, I understand. Okay, so uh, now we've clarified what those frictional forces are regarding the height of the jet. So you said that you both you use both the maximum height and the average yes. height. So is there a difference between the results when you fit for both of these? Uh, yes, so shown here, this is the water jet height compared to the tube radius. The maximum value was on average a bit higher than the um, um, average value of the graph. And you can see that um, here, you can see um, um, you can see that there's a difference in the maximum, which would have been some of these values and the average, which would have gone. So it seems to me, since your theory doesn't really include the water falling back on itself, what you are really predicting is the maximum height, right? Yes, but the other thing to note, often, the, you can see here in this video, that often the water doesn't fall exactly back on itself. It doesn't fall exactly back on itself. It has to be exactly perpendicular with no air currents at all. Keep the so, so make sure that time, your nozzle here is always vertical because you can see the water is actually blowing off the side. Yeah, so we always, every time we did this experiment, we used um, a spirit level to measure, make sure, to that's measure that's vertical. But as I said, it was impossible to get it exactly vertical because if it wasn't exactly vertical, it was okay. always vertical. That's understandable. Side. So because of that, there could also be additional error in some variation. Exactly, but because of the, the, the angle there, it's so minimal, it's not that um, much. Of so how can you actually calculate the maximum height? You used the acceleration due to gravity, right? Correct, so we use our, so if I go to the first one, um, we use, um, so we use our um, value for the velocity of the water out of the um, orifice, and we put it in our equation of motion, the final velocity equals equal to the initial velocity plus two times gravity. So the question here is that you're neglecting a few forces, one of them is the air resistance and the other is the surface tension. Yes. Here. So can you estimate roughly how much that might affect Okay, so as I emphasized in my um, presentation, right. this was a calculation that was simplified with no frictional forces. Okay. It was, it's very hard to control and calculate every single one of those sure. frictional forces. Sure. In terms of air resistance, we didn't think that was ever going to be a massive problem and have a significant effect because the velocity of the water was never particularly fast. Yeah, I agree with you because the height is very low. Yes. Well, looking at your parameters, do you go to the graph where you show the different heights? Yes, so uh, this one is here. The, uh, this one. This one. Right, okay. So can you explain why the error bars of these are so large? Okay, so the error bars of these are so large. We saw a large amount of fluctuation 
between, um, sorry, weren't you taking the average value and the maximum value? So why is there a fluctuation in the average value? No, but this, this, this error, these error bars were calculated by all the trials we did for one setup. We um, looked at the, um, we took the average of that and we compared it to the um, furthest um, values away from that and we saw a fair bit of fluctuation. The other thing to keep in mind, this scale is very different, so um, it's quite small. So the fluctuation between that is like um, one centimeter, which so the measure the difference, difference of this height, I think it's still quite large. Now. It's quite large in comparison to that, but it's still quite large in, in comparison to the fan. So what about this coefficient here that you fitted for that? Okay, so, so this is the coefficient fitted through straight through that data. Um, but if you put in the frictional coefficient, the difference is this average is about um, um, 0 0.17, a little bit less. And if you put that, that's fairly closely um, um, graded there, which is 0 0.02. So it would, the gradient would be like slight, but very, very slightly shallower. Um, but that wouldn't be a significant change for that. The security that is here, the deviation could explain this again? Um, so that deviation would have been caused by the um, pre um, value that we got from the experiment being a lot lower than it should have been, which could have been caused by a number of issues from the air, air pressure not sealing correctly, um, or um, um, yes, yeah, so the air pressure not concealing correctly. The other thing is, I think we can move on. So um, we've already discussed what the cause of error here. Can we look at when you change the volume of the uh, tanks that you use? So if you when you changing the volume of the water tanks? Oh, we never changed the volume. Sorry, the, the diameter of the tubes. Yes, sir. Um, diameter of the tubes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can see from these trend lines, all of them have this downward trend as your battery gets larger. Right? Yes. So does that mean that you predict that eventually, if you have your tube radius large enough, you won't have any water coming out? Yes, correct. So can you I'm sorry, can you explain case? that? This? Sure. So essentially, you get to a point where um, you have your container, and then you say you get to a point where your tube is so big. At this point, however much volume of water in this container will never be able, there's not enough volume there to simply seal the tube like that, that it will basically only ever fill up part of the tube and just fall down it, which would mean that it would never oh, fall down. Is it a question for no slip, meaning that both these are always going to be covered with water? Yes, but so if, the diamond, if this tube is so bright that the volume of water here is not large enough to actually seep to actually cover that, it will not work because it won't be a head to seep. Okay, I, I don't think that really makes sense because your theory here assumes that there's no slip. So you should be able to explain this without yeah. getting into it. Yeah, there's, there's no slip on this boundary, but the water's not actually coming in contact with this boundary so, ever. Okay. So, so the can so you probably ask me at what point can you not use this assumption? Does this uh, yeah. so relationship not work? The largest value there, which was a diameter of 16 millimeters, so that was 16 millimeters across there, we were already starting to see occasional times where the water would not fill up the entire tube. It would fill up part of the tubes, and in that time it would fail. So for that last data point, 16 millimeters, we had to do nine trials because half of them it would fail because of that. It would, it would actually seal itself. So uh, regarding the time dependence then of your water, so obviously there's very large oscillations, and you does not really get any kind of oscillation. So can you explain why we would see such oscillation? Uh, oscillation or a fluctuation in the I'm not sure why that just died. Um, oh, okay. You think, um, you just... So the fluctuation is easy to look at. So you're talking about here the fluctuation right. height. Yes. Yes. So that fluctuation height is caused by. So when you have your water flowing down the pipes, it will build up a bit of pressure, and then as the fan is going, it's releasing some pressure. Oh, so that water is incompressible, correct? Yes, but so the pressure, as in the air pressure in the air body between it, that air pressure fluctuates over time. So you should be able to measure the air pressure. You said that you measure the pressure. Right? Yes, I've got the air pressure diagram. So what is the? Yeah. Can you show me how the pressure fluctuates then? Um, so the pressure fluctuate, I can go and find that in my computer. It's not up on the slide. Okay, so you can give me a rough estimate what scale is it at? Roughly what oh. it might do. Is it really enough to explain this oscillation here? Yeah, so the pressure data was approximately um, varied between about 106 kilopascals and about 110 kilopascals. So a bit more than the air pressure. And it, between that time, that was the experiments. In one experiment, it would vary between maybe 106 kilopascals and 107 kilopascals. Okay. And, and the final question well. is, so you didn't really estimate the Reynolds number. No. You know so that the Reynolds number will be smaller if your tubes are smaller and larger if the tubes are bigger. Exactly. So when you increase the tube diameter, did your uh, assumption of lunar flow fail? Um, so in the bigger diameters, even the, um, so the 16 millimeter, we did think that... Um, we're out of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So in this our discussion, first we talked about the mechanism of the appearance function again. And uh, we, we pointed out a lot of sources of energy loss that the core did not consider. For example, the amount of loss caused by the curvature of the pipes, which would obviously affect their calculation of the amount of loss. Then, uh, regarding the definition of the heights, uh, we noticed that their nozzle was not actually pointing exactly vertical, and because of this, this would have caused additional error, and this is a point in the experiment that they could have improved on. Then, regarding the effect of relevant parameters, we uh, did our best to try and explain some of the deviations better. Uh, and uh, on page 25, their data conflicts with their assumption of the you know, slip condition. However, uh, they weren't able to give an uh, estimate on when exactly that would occur, although they were able to give a qualitative explanation. And finally, regarding the uh, changing time dependence of the height, uh, we pointed out that their starting condition does not actually uh, control for the height very well. Uh, however, uh, the opponent pointed out that the air pressure fluctuation, uh, the reporter pointed out that air pressure fluctuation is very important, however, the opponent does not believe that is the case. All right, um, we now have uh, clarification questions from the reviewer. Okay. Um, oh, so first for the new report, uh, concluding for a program experiment, if we want the highest water jet, uh, what are the best parameters? So the highest water jet we found was you need a larger possible diameter and you need to contains to be as stable as possible. Uh, okay. And so uh, you, you said you didn't uh, you didn't calculate uh, the number in your experiment. No, we didn't. We just uh, used so the okay. uh, and uh, you or don't know for sure if it's low lamina or low turbulence. And oh, do you know what, is the, what could be the difference? Um, so the difference that I described in the PowerPoint is those thresholds at 2,000 and 4,000. Um, but also our shoe diameter was most small for most of them. That we can assume was lamina. For the bigger one, however, we were fairly confident it was turbulent from the visible flow of the water through the pipes. And for the opponent, how would you describe, uh, how would you explain the oscillations uh, and so we think this is primarily caused by the water falling back on itself, not due to the air pressure fluctuations. Uh, but so, since he said that the nozzle wasn't vertical and we, said it, and we see that water is falling exactly, exactly back on itself, correct. However, because of the uh, surface tension of the water, it actually breaks up into smaller parts as it is going out. So because of that, the height is changing. So you think that uh, that would happen also if the water jet was uh, vertical, right? If it was completely vertical, then the oscillation should become even more obvious. Uh, so, uh, you didn't discuss it, but did, did you uh, have uh, the uh, theoretical prediction on frictional coefficient? Uh, a theoretical uh, prediction. The frictional coefficient is what we calculated from the experiment. Uh, no, no, theoretical prediction on this uh, that slide on the linear table, if you had some. Sorry, did you Did slide? you? Okay. Uh, your experimental values, and you had the uh, theoretical prediction. Yeah. And you had the error only for the experimental value. Uh, you have some cons uh, some um, yeah. metric values uh, used for it that predicted. Uh, uh, we don't know. I don't have on the screen, but they would be similar um, to um, our error for the actual value. Okay. So um, also, do you, want, uh, do you know what uh, is missing um, in his uh, big parameters? Sorry. Sorry. The, what is missing in? The uh, you you have uh, y equals something. Do you know what is missing? Okay, so uh, okay, I, I guess I don't really understand this graph because you didn't explain it like clearly. Okay, okay. So it's, it's very small, but uh, the units are missing and also the, the values are not found. As, and uh, the, the uh, so about this graph, uh, do you have arrows for x value? Uh, yeah, the x value they're very small because that was the height of the container, so we can measure that very accurately. Okay. So then you can see that they're very small. Okay, thank you.
reporter for a great discussion and we're ready to a solution for the problem. Now I would like to... Um, so, the reporter did a great job explaining what is the carrot font thing and how that does actually work. Uh, explain how the water exits the system uh, because of the difference in pressures. Uh, he introduced the, the, the theoretical prediction for the height of uh, that water, but uh, uh, his theory was simplified and he couldn't really uh, compare it uh, with uh, his experiment later. Uh, so uh, he did have a like, uh, correction for the theory which includes the uh, friction, but uh, that uh, couldn't be, uh, could be compared with the experiment. Uh, he varied the uh, different parameters, uh, he varied tube radius, length of the tubes, uh, and the uh, pressure uh, loss. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, he had some, some errors in his graphs where uh, the errors were not uh, really well explained. Uh, some of that uh, was uh, clarified later in the discussion. Um, also, uh, he did not explain the, that anomaly in uh, and oscillations of the water flow. Um, and uh, his, uh, he didn't explain how the height of the water varies in time and how does it increase. Uh, the opponent noticed uh, many of these mistakes. I uh, think that it is really important that uh, he noted the uh, uh, he noted the energy loss and uh, how it was not calculated. Um, he noted that the reporter uh, wasn't uh, measuring height uh, of the water in time and uh, that Reynolds number was not calculated. Uh, but he asked for predicted values of water height uh, many times and uh, I think that the reporter explained that uh, really well uh, previously. And uh, he did not uh, notice uh, some lack of errors and error explanation that went around the numbers on the fit values. Uh, and the missing units, uh, and uh, he did not ask for errors and pre uh, for predicted values. Uh, in their discussion, they talk about uh, loss of uh, energy a lot, and uh, I think uh, that we here agree with the opponent because I think that energy loss and pressure loss is uh, really important here, and that is the reason why he could not compare his theory uh, with his experiment. Uh, and uh, some values uh, in his theory could have been calculated and compared uh, like that. Uh, so they, they talk about measuring the height of water jet, and uh, uh, here it was uh, brought, brought, brought up that uh, uh, the water jet was bending and the water wasn't, the water flow wasn't uh, completely vertical. And uh, the board has said that uh, nozzle. Uh, uh, that, that, that is important, but they think that uh, the water is still falling on the on the uh, on itself, and that really produces the uh, oscillations. Uh, I agree with both for uh, height of the water jet, and it is not uh, completely vertical, so it is really hard to achieve an experiment. Uh, but uh, that could have been uh, better done. Uh, so they are for the time dependence, uh, the theory. Uh, not predicted the oscillations. I agree with that uh, with the opponent, and I think that uh, that was a really uh, important thing. So, yes. thank you. Quite um, 
sound proof in that the stuff we looked at um, was both supported by the theory through Hagen's point, Hagen point say, um, matches the um, um, frictional losses and also works well with some of the stuff I explored with Bernoulli's equation. So essentially, uh, in, in um, conclusion, our um, Heron's Fountain presentation explored um, the phenomenon of the Heron's Fountain, explained how it worked, and investigated a range of parameters that affected the height of the water jet. And we found in, um, find in conclusion that the height difference um, was um, somewhat related linearly, um, where is the difference between height two and height one, but there was a large difference between that theoretical value and the real value from all the frictional forces discussed. And we found that the true cross-sectional area is um, proportional in a quadratic relationship with um, the water jet height, and that's to discuss and again supports Hagen Poisset's theory. And finally, the length of the tube was related in an inverse square fashion. So in conclusion, I think that was a very positive discussion. Thank you. We have all three. <coughs> I'll just get up the front, please. So now I have um, jury questions. Can um, <coughs> stop that? Um, so just to for, maybe for the jury, I just like to remind you to keep your questions short. The like rule of thumb, you know, shouldn't take longer than 15 seconds to ask ask a question or 30 <coughs> seconds to answer. Um, and I'll, we'll try and spread the questions around to the jurors as much as we can. All right. Okay. So we've got that. <coughs> the shortest way might work. Forty. What is going to be? You thought that this is pressure difference. Correct. Of what points? Uh, so if I go back to uh, to my uh, diagrams, it's the pressure difference. So he's looking at the pressure difference caused by the static pressure of this column and the static pressure of that column. And pressure difference due to gravity. Due, due to the height difference. Due to gravity. Sorry. Uh, no, right? it's the pressure difference caused by the different heights of the water columns. Uh, could you go to the slide where you have actual water ESI and predicted water ESI? Ah, uh, yeah. <coughs> this one, yeah. yeah. Could you just clarify the uh, mixed columns? Ah, uh, sorry, this is. The height of container C, which we were doing experiment, this was our predicted values using this equation. This was our actual reported data from the experiments, and this was the frictional coefficient found by um, dividing our actual um, and our predicted values to find how the difference is. Can you briefly explain why there are three centimeters and one and a half meter? I think that's probably the explain is not really for the clarification question. Um, can I just ask you? Um, uh, well, please, please go to um, slide 20. Um, are the units on those y-axis correct? Oh, sorry, man, that's meters by 10 to negative 2, so it's actually 7 meters. Okay, thank you. Um, could you go to your slide, I think it's on 25, where you show the high of the function of yeah, exactly. Uh, am I right that I see in the diagram <coughs> HG equals minus something A squared? Correct. And is, is this the same uh, assumption as that you can say that HJ is uh, proportional to A squared or is it something different? No, it's the same one. Uh, that A is that A. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I just ask the um, David? whether you thought, you asked about air resistance and surface tension. Do you think they're significant effects? No, no, no. We just want to see if they can say that. Okay. Then maybe to all of you, I think, to your conclusion, please. But then maybe to the opponent, the viewer. What is the physical meaning of Hg is proportional to A squared? What would be if I would take an extreme high radius of the tube? What would, it, what would be the physical meaning according to this uh, assumption? Or what do you think what would happen if it would take a very, very huge radius of the tube? How would it really so turn out? So what would happen if you made the pipe very yeah. large? Yeah. The, 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 the pipe, yeah. 
Misheard. You, you made some. You mentioned an inverse square proportion. Right. Is, is, is that? Yeah, the orange is an inverse square. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Just one more short. If you can explain it shortly. Yeah. How did you get from uh, uh, a at the power of four into a at the power of two at the bit out in front? Yeah. Okay, so essentially from the theory of theoretical H-based proportion to R to the fourth power, the area of the circle is pi R squared. So that tells us that our area is proportional to R squared. So if you substitute A in for R squared, R squared, you take that out and you get A squared. Okay. Okay. This is this is the A. Right. So that's the time. So we'll now um, allocate our scores.
evidence for. So we'll um, now show our scores for the starting with the scores for the quarter. And we'll read them now. We'll go from B that way. So we've got six, four, five, six. I'm going to go down to five. Five point oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll go to the scores for the opponent. Eight, six, seven, seven, six. And the scores for the uh, reviewer. Six, five, five, seven, five. Solid, and there were some good bits, but it could have been taken further. So, um, right for the opponent, there were two sixes and uh, at the low end, um, Victor, you'd like to comment on your six for the opponent? Um, my mark is the ball of six, because um, I think for the first grade uh, last I put uh, 1.5. And then the position switch there it was the two and the and then the session reporter is the one point five, so six. Okay, um I was the only one scale of the eight. Um I I'll go through I um you, know, you used pretty much all the time you had available to you both the questions and the um your speech time and I thought you did a good job of getting right to the point of some very important issues with your questions. So I gave you two for the questions. Um, I thought your speech did a good job of outlining what you thought about what you asked about. Um, so I gave you two and a half out of uh, four for that. And um, your discussion, I um, gave you three for that, which sort of put me sort of on eight and a half actually. But I took half a point off um, some of the questions, like the proportionalities and the, and the questions that sort of just little, little trip up at the end, but um, still very good reviewer, I thought. Oh, sorry, opposition. Um, and for the reviewer, um, again, there were three um, 
fives, um, Albert, would you like to comment on your five for the review? And at the other end, um, there was a seven from Lucia. Good job.